Okay, so welcome to this meditation practice. Um, I would like to focus on helping us to regulate ourselves, calm our nervous systems, with an intention of connecting with each other, whether in real time or whether asynchronously, whenever anyone else watches or listens to this video. And let's get started. Let's first do some breathing and noticing. And you can Notice if you're sitting in a chair or standing up or perhaps lying down. And find a focus point or you can close your eyes, whatever works better for you. And then when you're breathing in, you can notice your spine straightening out and when you're breathing out you can notice the breath coming down and grounding you down your spine and down your body and into the floor and if you want you can choose a mantra something simple like in or out or maybe you could say shalom or any other focus word that works for you. I'm going to focus on Shalom. And as I do that, I'm going to, as I close my eyes, I'm going to visualize the shin. The Lamed. above and the mem. And I'm going to stay with that for a minute or so. Just noticing my breath and noticing the letters without any attached stories or commentaries. And if those happen, then I will come back to my breath and come back to visualization of the letters. And if you have a busy mind, that's okay. That's just a part that isn't ready to let go and let you relax. You can politely ask that part to please step aside and let you focus. In fact, you can even ask that part if they want to join you in this meditation. And I'm noticing my breath and I'm coming back to that shin. Lamed. Uh, Ma'am, and you may notice that your body is sending you some signals of something that might indicate some pain or an emotion. And we can alternate between noticing the breath and noticing any sensations that your body is sending you. There may be a tightness in the shoulders, a heaviness in the chest, perhaps your gut is clenched 
Sometimes people have trouble sitting to sitting still for meditation and it's perfectly fine to do this walking around or standing and rocking on your feet with your feet planted on the floor. I'm noticing just my shoulders a little bit. And we can send wishes for kindness to our shoulders and our body. Let's send chesed, kindness and acceptance to our body that might be feeling the stress, our emotions. And let's reflect on what that kindness might look like. Making that sensation welcome by inviting that sensation to be heard. I visualize Abraham Abinu, Abraham opening his tent on all four sides. Welcome any parts, any internal parts that might be needing some care and some compassion. We'll get to compassion in a little bit. So kindness is being welcoming and extending care. And if it's in the morning where you are, what might your body and your emotions need to set you up for your day? If like me, it's nighttime, what might my system need? What can I offer in kindness to my body and my system? Continue to notice the breath. And I'm still focusing on shalom. And if we're extending this attribute of chesed, of kindness, let's reflect on someone you know, someone close to you or someone who you see on a daily basis, who might benefit from sending kindness and thoughts of care and open heart to that person. And if you get distracted, then just Label that thinking and offer that distracted part to join you for the meditation or maybe take a swim in the Kinaret, sit on the beach, sun themselves.
extending kindness to someone you know who needs some acts of kindness. Perhaps it's someone who is irritable and short-tempered. Or perhaps it's someone who suffers from someone in their life who is irritable and short-tempered. Perhaps it's a mom who's holding the fort while her husband is serving, sending her kindness and care and reflecting on what our community might do to help her. And I know that there are so many, so many activities helping people who need help there. And let's extend that intention of kindness to the general community, particularly focusing and sending kindness to those who are struggling because of the effects of the war. Breathing in the kindness of Hashem's oxygen. Exhaling out the carbon dioxide and the toxins. And every time we breathe in, we breathe in that kindness. And every time we exhale, we can notice that our bodies are getting stronger because our breathing system is for Hashem working. And then shifting our focus back to send kindness to the community. Moms and grandparents and soldiers and shopkeepers and teachers and children and those of us who are outside of Eretz Yisrael who really, really miss being there. And let's check in and kind of notice if our nervous system is any calmer or perhaps more agitated. You can do a brain break by opening your eyes and looking around before we move on to the attribute, the Mida of Kibura. Maybe do a cleansing breath. And then finding your focus point. You may have a picture of exotic near you, or a picture of your kids, or someone else that you love. Maybe a parent, a very good friend. Now shifting over to Gavura. frequently translated as discipline, which is not a word that I enjoy because it comes from the word, the root, the disciple, which became Christianized. So let's use Gavura in the terms of restraint. And let's reflect on restraint and how restraint, restraint has its place. even perhaps restraining a little bit that busy mind and inviting that agitation to accept a little bit restraint. Not that we wanna restrain a part of ourselves to the point where they feel exiled and suffocated, but just some gentle, gentle, boundaries, 
And let's reflect on how restraint is something that you might need. Some of us, some of us self-care by eating and a little bit of restraint without deprivation might be a healthy and wise choice. Mm, some of us care for ourselves by over-exercising or maybe overindulging in the other substances. Some restraint in that direction might be a healthy choice. Many times people, when they're agitated or anxious, they find themselves checking locks, washing hands, checking the news every five minutes. Some restraint on those compulsions with kindness and restraint. And we'll get to the next the level of compassion and rockery as our next practice. But let's stay with restraint right now. In what way, focusing on someone you know, maybe it's a child or a spouse, Christian Neff calls it fierce compassion. We didn't get to compassion yet, but restraint might be helpful to help structure another person of letting them know in a wise and a caring way One restraint might be a good idea. Perhaps solving problems collaboratively. Hmm. Let's reflect on the word Gavura. Vura Gibor is a hero. Valor. That's Kyle. Gibor, what is Gibor is to overcome? So perhaps someone needs some help overcoming something that they're struggling with. So let's focus on that. Someone you know who needs some help overcoming. Philippe Gabert. Or Manchur. Perhaps the chaos of the war needs a tikkun of some Gavura. But moving next to Tif Eret or Rachamin, it's very difficult for me to just focus on Gabura without coming to Rachamin from the same Shorish, the same root as Rechem. A woman's womb. Nurturing. And somewhere I read some years ago that Rachamim essentially means combining Chesed and Gula in balance. This is the attribute of Yaakov Avinu. 
And he brought down not only the, the war of his father, but also the application of the Vura in the physical world, applying it in the house of Lavan, in how he related to his brother to protect his family, and raising his children and managing his four wives. And let's think about how Rachamim is also a mita that provides kindness and compassion to someone regardless of whether they deserve it or not. It comes as a free and open-hearted mita. Let's reflect on how each one of us in this moment could benefit from some compassion, self-compassion, compassion from Hashem personally delivered in this moment, as Hannah says, and this moment, and this moment. And you might want to provide your, yourself some kind of compassionate touch, whether you put your hands on your chest or one hand on your heart or one hand on your gut, or maybe wrap your hands around yourself or do the small butterfly, tapping one hand over the other or the big butterfly tapping one shoulder and the other shoulder of sending kindness, restraint, and compassion to yourself and asking Hashem to extend Rachamim to you because these are not times that we're used to. Many did not expect this ever to happen again. Many of us assumed that it could happen, but this came as a shock and continues to shock us. So compassion. And let's extend that compassion to someone you know who could use some compassion. Think of a person close to you and breathing in compassion from Hashem and then exhaling compassion, sending that out to your friend or your family member or your neighbor. Breathing in Rachamim and breathing out Rachamim. Breathing in Rachamim and breathing out Rachamim. Sending that out to someone who really needs that understanding and that acceptance, that open heartedness, that unconditional adult command. And let's extend the wishes, the prayers, or the brachas for compassion to those who are really, really struggling in Eretz Yisrael, the moms, the kids, 
the exiles, the, the hostages, the soldiers. And my goodness, compassion to the government, which God knows we all have our opinions about them. But compassion is about not, not whether someone deserves it, but it's a free ticket of an open heart to those who are struggling. And may it be that our drawing down compassion within our hearts and extending it down here in the physical world, may it be that this intention will rise up to Shemaim and Hashem will open up compassion for all of us, for Claudia Yisrael, whether in Israel or anywhere else in the world. May it be that Hashem will echo back from below to above and above to below. And let's just breathe on that. Reaching up to the Soviet Kol'onen, where all is good. And asking Hashem to send down compassion on an individual basis, on a local, to your friend or your family, on a community basis, to your neighborhood. to our country, our homeland, and to the world of the Jewish community and the non-Jewish community. Since Hashem is the Ribon Sha'olam, the Av Harachamim, let's just stay with that for another minute. When you're ready, you can open your eyes. You can feel your feet and your seat grounded in your seat or grounded on that couch or on that bed. And you orient back into a room, back into the physical world. And I wish you all a good day or a good afternoon or a good evening or a good night. I'm going to stop the recording now. Thank you so much.